This is Savage Annie with Into the Pit with Annie. I'm here with Defy the Tyrants yep. at the Marrow on August 23rd. They're about to play a show here. Go ahead and introduce yourselves and what you do for the band. I'm Chris. I do vocals. I'm Tony. I play guitar. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. So, how long have you guys been doing this and why Defy the Tyrants as a band name? Uh, God damn it, Luke. We've been doing this about, what, three years? Three years now, yeah. We've been going on three years, just hit three years. Uh, thanks to Facebook memories, we were able to figure that out. <laughs> um, yeah, we've been doing this about three years, but we were just practicing and writing for like six months before, uh, before we went public and put out our social media pages and all that good stuff, so. Yeah. Always a good move. Three years, that's a long fucking time with you guys. <laughs> yeah, you guys actually have some really good numbers. Uh, your cover of Roots, Bloody Roots, like, it's fucking like just awesome oh thank you um, <laughs> not that i've plugged your stuff at all on any of my playlists uh but i actually went on a radio show last friday and plugged one of your songs that's awesome um so when that recording comes out i'll send it to you guys oh, yeah. um but the vegas audience re was really receptive to it um so just just fyi oh, yeah. uh word on the street is you might be coming into vegas soon uh yeah i uh, think what November, the, no, November 2nd, coming at the, the dive. Yeah, yeah. Dive bar. So, awesome. It's going to be my first time in Vegas ever. So really? I, um, I actually live like five miles from the dive bar, and that's like one of my favorite watering holes. So, um, great venue. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you guys are working on a new EP and starting some guitar riffs on YouTube. So we just dropped a new EP, Asylum. Uh, we spent, what, about a year working on it? A year writing and recording years. it, yeah. a long time. Uh, we wanted to make sure we had a bunch of multimedia projects for it, so we mm -hmm. did like a, a two-part YouTube documentary, uh, did a lyric video for it, lyric video slash music video, and we're also doing guitar playthroughs for four and a half of songs. Nice. So there's a lot of stuff. And we're shooting our next music video for it uh, yeah. next week. Yeah. Fuck, that's next week? That's next no. week? It's not a lyric video, it's a concept video. Concept video yeah. Awesome. And, um, yeah, not enough fans be, do concept videos. Well, I mean, it's going to be directed by our drummer, so we're going to see how it looks, but I think it's going to be fucking sick. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's directing it. God, I'm damn. not in the loop on a lot of Cle things. Clearly, band, band meetings are not his strong suit uh, for attendance. Which is weird because he's always at them. <laughs> <laughs> Dudes, uh, get off of Tinder and like. Get, it's kidding. all about kidding. bubble. I'm just kidding. It's all about bubble. Damn, They're both the same thing. Right? It's fucking you same thing. Grindr. Oh man. I, you know, what about I Hinge? Are you on Hinge too? too much, <laughs> and I was like, I can just, you know, get this somewhere else. It's not that hard. I can just go to a bar and like let my hair down. Exactly. Yep. Pretty much. I feel like I feel like that's what you do. I feel like you just go to a when bar I, when and you're done. Dick, absolutely, hundred percent. Hell yeah. How often does that work for you? <laughs> it works probably ninety-eight percent of the time. How many of them let you put your pinky in their butt? Every single one. <laughs> just gonna ask nicely. With okay. sweet nothing. I could ask. Yeah. So. <laughs> you guys haven't haven't ventured out of San Diego too much as a band. Are there yeah, yeah. some tour destinations in the nearby regions or like uh, how's it going, anything dude? else I that you're? A while, there's, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, hell yeah, so you guys can. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing really in the works right now. Um, ideally, West Coast tour would be you know that'd yeah. Be, that'd be, Sick, uh, yeah, so pretty much like San Francisco, LA, probably Oregon at some point, Washington. You should look at San Luis Obispo too, because that's midway between San Fran and San uh, and okay. LA. Yeah, yeah. mid state. Yeah, hell yeah. They've got a couple dive bars there, I think. It's, the it's a college there town. Okay. It's yeah. Not, so like, I was I went up there a lot when like in high school and shit like that. It was you know there was there was like a pocket of people doing shit, but they like mostly like had like fucking shows at like a warehouse or something. It was cool as fuck. It was really fucking dope. But like it's not as like at least back then I don't know how it's really now, but it seemed like not as like big as it is like out in San Diego or like in LA and shit like that. Cool. But still a fun area. Yeah. So, yeah. What about North County? Is there anything in Temecula? Uh, Temecula is not, it's not, it's almost. It's North County. It's almost San Diego. Eh. Um, to, in Temecula, I don't fucking know. I think there was fucking. We got, we got offered one yeah. show and then we had to turn it down because it was like ridiculous. It was like they wanted to sell us to sell like 60 tickets. Out of market, we were like, oh, you're just asking for money. It was really good. But, um. <laughs> North County used to have such killer fucking venues. I remember growing up, I played fucking, I played the Jumping Turtle, and like, just such a prime location. But they got shut down for a lot of different reasons. But 
Yeah. <laughs> are there are there any venues that are still open up there you want to play at that you haven't yet? It's, I don't know, it's not really a big, like, I don't know, it's just not a music town or a music area. Like, uh, almost every time we get, like, a show. Avocados course, and golf courses. That's, yeah, yeah dude, it's, it's like, you know, like, a lot of, like, families and, like, old Republicans and shit like that, so it's, they're not really too into the music scene, so. Have you guys uh, tried to get into any of the festival circuits, speaking of festivals? No, not really. We we did have an Ellie Fest, uh, mm-hmm. two Ellie Fests that we were booked for, but they both fell through. It was like a really shady promoter. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was Ooh. unfortunate. I was really excited for that too. Worst promoter experience. <laughs> I was actually just talking about this like an hour ago with Alex. I mean, you don't have to drop names though. Yeah, let's yeah. not. Let's <laughs> not do Or venues. I'll, I'll drop some fucking names. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, probably the worst. My job experience. is to make you look good. Okay, bro, don't make it okay. difficult. There's been. Um, we don't talk some shit. <laughs> like, um, no, my worst experience was it, we were uh, booking through this booking agency here at our local House of Blues. Uh, we were uh, booked to play main stage. They had to sell 100 pre sale tickets. Uh, did not in the deal, we had to do a contract and everything. They never said what the compensation was going to be. And so all the bands, we're all young, you know, we were all like, okay, we're going to find out once we get there. We get there, they have a meeting with all the bands and they tell everybody, okay, we're going to give you 50% off coupons for the entire House of Blues restaurant. We're like, some of these motherfuckers can't even get into House of Blues without a parent. So we're like, what the fuck? And each band had to sell 100 tickets, 10 bucks a ticket, we all gave them 1,000 bucks each. We got fucked over hard. That's crazy. It was still one of my favorite shows, but that was definitely the worst experience with the booker I've had. I, uh, <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> High school or whatever, playing this one venue. I'm not gonna fucking name anything, but we uh. He named so many people well, just no, now. No, House of Blues, but I didn't name the agency. They uh, but yeah, this one venue. It, it was a killer show, killer lineup. We were really stoked to play it, and we you know we, we sold all our pre-sale tickets and then some. Had people come up to the door, all that good shit, and you know some of us driving to the place like fucking an hour and a half, you know, mm-hmm. all in gear. So that's fucking gas. Man. That's a lot of gas when we came back, and that's pretty much what we were promised, you know. We didn't get anything, and we sold like several hundred, I think close to like five hundred dollars or something like that. It's a local band and fucking kids in high school, you know. So this mm-hmm. is, we hustled a lot to get it done, and we get nothing. Oh, so we found out like some dude pocketed money, and like yeah, it was it was a big thing. A lot of bands well, found that out and found the dude, and it was yeah, it got fucking pretty gnarly. We've fun. had some touring bands with door deals in Vegas, like basically just like not pay any of the locals. It's, yeah, it's, and like just take all the money and pocket it. This shit happens all the time, yeah. especially with like kids too doing this shit. Mm-hmm. Like, cause they don't know. I mean, you're an experience. You have no idea. Some dude promises you a good deal. You're like, oh fuck yeah, but. A lot of the times they're, you know, right. they're money, so. So if you could give advice to the kids that are starting bands and starting to play shows locally in their area, what what would you you tell them to make sure they have in line? Don't sign any contracts. I don't care who it's with. Don't sign any contracts. Um, and do not take pre-sale shows or pay-to-play shows unless you can pull the amount of people that they're requesting. Do not fuck yourselves over. That's definitely what I would say. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no um, pressure. He's just going down the I mean, list. Shit. I've had I've had fucking bookers be like, hey man, you know, it'd be cool if you had this type of sound or whatever. Try to like manipulate because you know you're fucking younger and stuff like that. So they're trying to manipulate you to like do this thing, and they want to try to manage you and stuff like that. And fuck that. Do it yourself. You know what I mean? Just yeah. You know, you don't really need. A lot of like extra support nowadays. You have so many different resources. You have the internet and all that good shit. You know, but, like when I was doing this shit, it was just kind of getting to that point, mm-hmm. but it was still really fucking hard. Now it's like shit. Like I'm not, you know, we're not worried about like fucking labels or like you know any fucking like, tour managers. Oh, just fucking do it yourself. You know? Yeah, DIY is definitely the way to go, which has made made labels change the way that they approach bands oh, yeah. and manage them. Yeah. Now they're more of a marketing and and. Uh, like just backing firm or like an investor, yeah, but the, but less of a controlling entity as far as the creative juices that flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and, and also too like like a lot of bands like they'll take like fucking two influences mm-hmm. and then they'll like try to create some, which you know to each their own that's cool and shit. But like it's just I find it to be like a more genuine, unique like musical experience if, if there's like this like 
pretty much like a shit ton of different influences instead of like two or three, you have five or six. Yep. You, know what I mean? you need, need variety and you need to like keep changing things up. You know? A well rounded palette of music yeah, is always good for creative flow. Yeah, it's like for us, like we all listen to different shit. There's very few bands that we all listen to collectively. Like, like three or four, maybe. Uh, <laughs> what are your guilty pleasures on your playlists? I ain't guilty of shit. I'll just say Wind Biscuit. I have relocated due to traffic of vehicles pulling out. Take three. Chris, what are your guilty pleasures? Fuck, I don't know. I guess. I don't have guilty pleasures. I listen to mostly brutal death metal 24 7. I listen to a lot of lo fi hip hop. That's, that's my. <laughs> Um, shit to the little fight hip hop. I love like jazz beats, shit like that. Um, and then when I'm really shit faced, Mac DeMarco. Matt DeMarco. I love Mac DeMarco. I don't know what the fuck that is. Ah. It's, uh, he's, it's sad time music. It's not sad time music. Sad time music. <laughs> sad time music. Is it like, oh. come on? Nah, no. it's like, it's like folky, like. Music to kill yourself, too. It's not music to kill your. It's like, is it to murder your sheep sacrifices to the like, gods type what, shit? What would I no. even call it? I don't know. I don't want to mislabel him and have like, a bunch of shit for it. But like, I guess indie or like hipster type shit? Yeah, it's like hipster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's a, fucking dope. He's really good. He's a pussy. He makes, he's a pussy. Uh, oh god. You are what you eat. Wait, so wait. I thought you, I thought oh, you were... Oh shit, I am an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Bad boys. <laughs> Hear you so, I don't know. Guilty pleasures for you? Oh, Jesus. Well, you don't listen to guilty pleasures. Yeah, I mean, I'm not guilty. Right? I love guilty pleasures. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, stuff that you normally wouldn't think a metalhead has on their playlist. Uh, 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 a lot of punk, like bad religion, uh, exploited, uh, distillers. But that's not like guilty. Like, um, okay. I also like hipster music, like the Shins and Foster the People. And, and Keep they, listening to them, man. Keep listening to them. And they give me shit for Limp Biscuit. <laughs> I mean, yes. I mean, at least yes. Limp Biscuit is a little heavy. I mean, they're like but rap rock, shit. But, but they, they still have some heavy shit. Yeah. I don't know about that. It's not no fucking, you know, Foster the People. I'm just saying. They write better songs. So yeah, one song. Yeah. They don't. All right. Anyways. If you guys were invited out to do like Las Vegas Death Fest or Maryland Death Fest or something in like Chicago, would you would you guys haul ass and do it? Like, would that be something that would be Vegas, a goal for you guys? Sure. Ve yeah, Vegas is much more doable. Maryland, we would try. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere we would try anywhere. Vegas is the most doable, obviously. Like a five-hour drive. Yeah. 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 I used to live there, so I definitely. It's not that bad. I do live there. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. It's rough. It's rough to live there for a couple years. Um, compared to the rent prices out oh, here? Rates. I mean, great. yeah. Rent right. is great. And and how far away the venues are from me and the traffic? Like, I'm good. I'm really good. Yeah. I live like six miles from like most of the venues. That's dope. Oh yeah. It's pretty cool. It's real hot there. Well, shit. It's real hot there. Um, it is cold here, so I don't like it. Shh, whatever. But I also went to high school in Fallbrook, so I did I did the opposite of what you did. Um. It's nice. It's nice to have this here. I got it. It feels hot high school. Nobody secure. can see your feet right now, but. Um, that's fine. I, yeah, that's, that's okay. I'm you just, could be I'm dry a, humping it right now and I'm nobody. Just a fucking nobody crazy person. No, that's. There's the. Oh, there's the hole. I can't find the hole usually. <laughs> All right, we're going to do it. Uh, <laughs> oh, John Mayer! Oh my god! All right. Well, I don't have any other questions for you guys, so what else do you guys want to plug? Any social media? Uh, release date for that video you mentioned, potentially? Oh yeah, he's directing it. Uh, well, hopefully. No, we're supposed to be direct. Uh, we're supposed to be direct. So we're talking like end of the year? No. Uh, probably like end of the year? Sure. Let's say January 1st. Yeah. Let's throw yeah. a date out there. <laughs> yeah. New Year's present! <laughs> Fuck yeah! But we have a new merch store um, going online next week. We also have new merch coming in for shows. New merch! Bunch of new yeah. merch. Yeah. New Shit. fucking merch. Shit tons of new merch. Are you guys gonna have signed EPs? <laughs> if people want that. Yeah. We have posters tonight. Designed. And I brought my silver sharpie. There you go. Ooh. Big yeah. rock star. Posters. I brought buttons. my tiny black one. That'll work on the we'll white make it work. We will make it work. We have um We'll have I'm not giving shirts, it to you, give it back. Posters, fine. Um <laughs> stickers, wristbands. 
And then we have a ton of shit, hoodies, a lot of shit on our online store. Hoodies, are they zip up hoodies or are they pullovers? Chris is trying to, to fuck people right now. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, this has been Savage Annie with Into the Booth. Annie and Defy the Tyrants. This has been a most, most eventful interview. This has been fun. This is pretty cool.